Hi guys, my name is Derek. I'm gonna show you guys the 106 robot pneumatic system. What you'll need is the tire, and then you're gonna have a, a filter for your exhaust, uh, two of these quarter inch NPT, one smaller for your piston, uh, the tire pump lock, um, the pressure release valve, and two uh, swivels for your quarter inch tubing that you'll have here. Uh, these can be any length. Um, this is also your thumb lock that will attach to the tire. To attach this to your tubing, all you have to do is heat up the tubing so it's nice and soft, and then you'll be able to press that on and it will uh, cool down and be nice and tight so it doesn't actually come on and off and it will be airtight. Uh, whenever you use any of these NPTs, uh, you'll need to put Teflon. Now there's a little bit of Teflon that comes on these already, so these are pretty much good, but it doesn't hurt to put extra Teflon. This is your Teflon tape. We'll go over how to apply this to the threading. Also, you have your uh, solenoid here. Uh, you'll need to wire this up, and we'll show you how to do that. You're gonna need some wire strippers, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a pair of pliers, because you'll also attach the spring to your piston, is which, which will bring it back. So we'll go over each of those things right now. All right, the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to wire up your solenoid here. Uh, right here, you'll have a screwdriver. Now you can unscrew this guy and rotate it to any position that you want. However you want to orientate this, that's totally your call. Um, we're gonna leave it in this position for now. But what first thing you'll have to do is get some power to it. There's a little Phillips head screwdriver here and you'll unscrew the screw here. Now, You'll see here that they actually say positive and negative on these sides. I've wired up the white to be positive and the blue to be negative. I recommend you do uh, red instead of white, but we had white wire sitting around. You'll feed these wires. All you have to do is there's two screws here. You'll unscrew them and strip your wires with wire strippers. So you have some exposed wire on both ends and then you'll put them in the holes here and then tighten down these screws uh, so that they actually cinch on the wires themselves and make a contact. And then once you've done that, you can feed your wires through this, right through here. And then you can attach this. Now you can orientate it this way or this way, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna put them this way just to keep it out of the way. And then you can tighten this back up. And that's how you get the wiring set up for your solenoid. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna test to make sure our wires are working and our solenoid is clicking over. Uh, first thing you'll need is a power supply or anything that you need. Um, you can do this with your battery power too to your uh, breadboard and just run the wires and connect them and disconnect them. But I'm gonna show you how you can do it with this. First thing to do is set this to 12 volts. So we've already set it to 12 volts. And then I will touch attach the uh, red wire. And then with the ground, all we're gonna do is touch the ground and that will close our circuit and you'll hear the solenoid click over, so. And now we know that we've wired this up and it's working properly. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply Teflon tape to all of our threads for these parts here. So you'll need that to make an airtight seal when you attach everything to your pneumatic system here. So we'll start with our pressure release valve. What this does is actually, as you fill up your tire, uh, this will release pressure. So you'll only be able to go up to 50 PSI. What that does is make sure everybody starts at the same level playing field. Um, you're gonna want the threads facing towards you and then you're gonna go clockwise when you thread it. So what I like to do is put a little bit pressure right there, attach it there and then you hold it down and you wrap it around. You'll go one full rotation around and you'll tighten the point of that and then you can break it with your fingers. And then you just go ahead and finish putting that Teflon on like that. The point of that is as you start to thread this that it doesn't un come unraveled, it actually tightens around those threads. So you'll do that for each set of these uh, male threaded NPT fittings and we can go through that, but it's all the same pretty much. Same thing with this guy. A quick little uh, tip on this one, it's gonna be a lot smaller of a thread, but if you actually thread and put the tape on the backside, it'll do the same job and you won't have overlap over the hole itself. So just, just a small amount there, and then you can put it on there and any excess with your fingernail, you can scrape away 
and you keep that hole clear. Okay, now we're gonna go over attaching all of these to our pneumatic system. First thing you need to know is that these are labeled. Um, P is, I say, for power, and that's where you're gonna get power from, your tire. So the P goes to your tire. A is for action, so that's what's gonna actually go to your uh, piston, and that will cause the action. And then R is release. That's where the excess air is going to release. So we'll start with R, and you're gonna use the filter. So you'll actually put that on, and you'll go hand tight, and it'll go all the way down. And then when you're ready, you'll use the wrench and make sure to wrench this down till it's nice and tight. You don't wanna over tighten this, because you could actually break something, but with an adjustable wrench, you'll just tighten that down. Then you have your two quarter inch, and those will go in the remaining holes. You'll use a wrench and tighten this all the way down. Now that's airtight and snug and ready to go. Okay, now we're gonna show you how we attach the NPT to the piston. Uh, if you, you can attach it to either side. If you attach it on the end here, it'll actuate out. And then the spring is what will bring it back and we'll show you how to attach the spring. If you put it here, when this piston's out and the air goes in there, it'll actually bring the piston in and then the spring would be the action to pull it out. Uh, for most of you, your design, wherever you go with, will actually be to go over here and then be very gentle because it is a, a smaller thread. So if you over tighten that, you will snap the threads inside. So it's very, very light pressure, a lot less than the uh, solenoid here. So be very, very gentle with that. Just a little bit of pressure, just a little, or you'll actually break that. So don't do that. All right, now we're gonna add our pressure release valve to our T and also our air fill valve to our T as well. These ones, you're gonna need a, uh, two wrenches or a vise. There'll be some down in the third floor. So we're gonna go over the vise and tighten these up. And then with the vise, we're gonna put the part in so that we clamp down on two of the flat edges. And then using our wrench, we can actually wrench this down till it's nice and snug. Like that. And we'll do the same thing with this guy. There you go. Now, depending on how your design is, you will have to do different things with your spring. For example, this one, we're gonna have it attached here, so it'll actually bring the piston back. Uh, I've already gone and bent the spring out a little bit and using a pair of pliers or any type of pliers, it can be needle nose or whatever you got handy, uh, you'll make a loop and then on here, I just looped it on here. You can attach it to anywhere on your robot, but for this demonstration, I've just attached it to the tubing itself. Now for the tubing, it's all just pressed in. So that's in and it's locked. I put a zip tie here so it doesn't move up on me, but all of your designs are gonna be different. So it's whatever you need. And then on this end, you have to bend it out just a little bit and then you'll loosen this nut and I'll attach it through this area and put this on there so it can't come off. Now when the piston fires, it'll actually bring itself back. Then we have our thumb lock. This will go on your tire. So you'll push down and then you'll lock it on. And now that's on nice and snug. If it does leak here, you can put a little Teflon on the threads on the tire. That will help prevent it from leaking, but you just gotta make sure it's down there all the way. But I'll show you how we can test for any leaks later. Next is our pressure release valve. With these, they just connect right in. They're pushed to connect. And then we'll get a little connection here to our other T. And this is actually where we will fill our tire. And this will actually release the pressure. So as you're filling the tire, this will make sure you can only go to 50 PSI. So you'll take it off here and you'll put your bike pump here and you'll fill that up, which we can show you in a little bit. Then once you have all this connected, if you do need to take these off, there's these little tabs here that you push down on and then pull out. So you can take those on and off and they just connect quickly. Uh, then you'll attach, this is our power. So we wanna go P for power. So we'll connect this to our power, which will go here. And then our action will connect to our piston. So now this is our complete system, all ready to go. And we'll air up the tire and we'll show you how to work it manually and electrically.
All right, so you'll remove the cap and you won't wanna fill the tire here because taking this on and off, you can start to damage the stem. So that's why we provide you with this. Whatever your bike pump is, you'll connect it and you'll start pumping up the air. Okay, as you're filling up, you'll hear the pressure release valve. So once you start doing that, that means you're at 50 PSI and you can release that and you're ready to go. A little troubleshooting, I can actually hear air leaking from my stem valve here. Probably means I have a bad connection here, but to make it even better, we're gonna put a little Teflon tape on the threads there. Uh, you can also use soapy water through your system here and check to make sure that there's any bubbles, then you know it's leaking. Uh, now this isn't as short as you want your system. You're gonna want your system as long as you need, so be careful when you cut these. This is just a demo setup, so don't copy this exactly. Okay, just like before when we tested the solenoid, we're gonna test it again. Now you can manually test to make sure all your pneumatic systems are working with the blue button that's right here. It might be a different color depending on what models we get, but there always be a button here. And if you press that button, you can manually fire the air. Now we're gonna use the actual electrical 12 volts by clicking. And you can see that actually works. So we know our pneumatic system is set to go, no leaks or anything like that.